welcome to video 3B, where we are going over um, understanding trig and their quadrants. All right. So just to recap, this is the unit circle. I'm going to go over just a little bit of each. So if you need to take screenshots or freeze or pay attention to the timing, you do whatever makes sense for you. So this is the full unit circle. Some of you are used to memorizing and writing this whole thing down. This is just quadrant one. Some of you are used to using this, but when you use this, you tend to use your astica. So please don't forget all students take calculus. And this reference is which trigs are positive. Some of you use your hand trick. And again, this is uh, zero pi, pi over six, pi over four, pi over three, and pi over two. To get your sine, cosine, tangent, you just follow this formula for cosecant, you flip this answer for secant you flip this answer for cotangent you flip this answer and uh, finally if you use the chart trick this is personally what i use so you uh, begin by um, really this is just a, a hint you don't actually have these two lines in here but really what you're doing is you're taking the square root of the first number and divide by two so the square root of zero divided by two is zero the square root of one divided by two is one half the square root of two divided by two is the square root of two over two and so forth then you just bring these all uh to their opposite boxes and then here, sine divided by cosine is equal to tan. So zero divided by one is zero. A half divided by the square root of three. Well, the easiest thing to do is take the numerator of sine and divide it by the cosine um, numerator. So one over the square root of three is the square root of three over three. Square root of two over square root of two is one. The square root of three over one is the square root of three. And one divided by zero is always undefined. So that's the chart trick. All right, so let's jump in. We're going to evaluate four questions, and each of the four questions I'm going to show you either using your actual quadrant, your um, hand trick, or your chart trick. So evaluating the sine, cosine, and tangent of this angle without a calculator. So if I'm looking at pi over 4, I know I'm in quadrant 1. So I go over to my pi over 4, and that is the xy coordinate I'm looking for. If I'm only in quadrant 1, same information, and quadrant 1 means everything is positive. So we started with a nice, easy question. We end up with the square root of 2 over 2, but it wants us to find the sine, the cosine, and the tangent. Sine is my y value, cosine is my x value, tangent is the y divided by the x, really the y's numerator over the x numerator. So just be aware of those. So for my sine of pi over 4, Oh, I see what I did. I see what I set up for myself. Okay, so we're going to get the coordinate point for each uh, one of these, and then we're going to solve using this information. That's what it looks like. So uh, for the hand trick to get pi over 4, I would um, take my hand. Pi over 4 is going to be that middle value. If I want to solve for sine, I'm going to do the square root of 2 over 2. Cosine would also be the square root of 2 over 2 because those are the, sorry, the top fingers would be sine, cosine, bottom would be sine. In this instance, we're lucky enough to end up with both the square root of 2 over 2. So I'm going to write the sine cosine coordinate point. Now let's use our chart trick. This is so easy because I did the work for the chart trick. I come from sine and then pi over 2 and ta-da, there's my answer and then ta-da, there's my cosine answer. So there we go. So let's finish that solve. So again, I want to know the sine, cosine, and tangent. So sine is equal to y, cosine is equal to x. Tangent is going to be the numerator of the y over the numerator of x. So sine is simply my y value. Cosine is simply my x value. Now for my tan value, I'm going to take the numerator over the numerator. So square root of 2 over 2 is still 1. Ta-da! Let's do another question. All right. So again, I'm going to start with just the coordinate point, just the x and the y. So negative 3 pi over 4, uh-oh, I got to do something first. The first thing I have to do is get it in standard position. So I bring it back around. Right now it's in negative 3 pi over 4. I add an entire circle to come back to 5 pi over 4. So now I know that I'm actually right here. So I could either look at that part of my unit circle and see that I'm at negative square root of 2 over 2, negative square root of 2 over 2. Or if I'm in quadrant 1, then I only have access to pi over 4. So I have the square root of 2 over the square root of 2. Knowing that 5 pi over 4 occurs in the third quadrant means that I'm looking at astica. T, -t, -t, T stands for tangent, stands for negative. So that means uh, my sign better be positive, my cosine better be positive, and my tangent is going to be negative. 
Oh, sorry. Ooh, said that funky. Let's try that again. My sign better be negative. My cosine better be negative for my tan to be positive. All right. So we end up with this negative square root of 2 over 2, negative square root of 2 over 2. Let's look at our hand trick. So again, I'm dealing with pi over 4, so that middle value. My cosine is going to be the bottom, square root of 2 over 2. My, sorry, top, square root of 2 over 2. My sine is going to be the bottom, square root of 2 over 2. And um, I'm going to reference my astica. Negative 3 pi over 4 is either this way, or if I think of it in standard position, 5 pi over 4 is this way. Either way, we're in quadrant 3. So again, sine is negative, cosine is negative, tan must be positive. Finally, if I've got that chart trick, one more time, dealing with pi over 4, here's my sine, here's my cosine. All I have to know is that I am in the third quadrant. So this is just a recap. So now let's finish the solve. If I know this information, how do I get the sine? Well, sine is the y, cosine is the x, tangent is the y numerator over the x numerator. So sine is just going to be the y value. Boom. Cosine is just going to be the x value. Tangent is going to be negative square root of 2 over negative square root of 2. A negative over a negative is still positive. Boom. We're done. Let's do another. Let's branch out outside of those 45 degrees and try something a little harder. Negative 210 degrees. I might want it in standard position, so I'm going to add 360 degrees, and I end up with positive 150. So right here is where I am. So if I have the whole quadrant, unit circle written out, then I already know my fraction is negative square root of 3 over 2 and 1 half. There's my coordinate x and y. Great. Let's say I didn't have that. I only had the first quadrant. 150 degrees is the reference angle of 30 degrees. Okay? So, and how do I know that? I compare it to 180 right here, the difference between 180 and 150. If you want to Google the phrase reference angle, please do. So again, I know I have the square root of 3 over 2, 1 half. The only thing I have to do is figure out whether it's positive or negative. Since I know 150 is in the second quadrant, then sine has to be positive. So my y has to be positive. Cosine has to be negative. Tangent has to be negative. Boom, there's my fraction. Does it match? It sure does. Let's try it with the next set. So I've got my hand trick. 210 degrees, again, is 150 degrees, but for its reference angle is 30 degrees. So I'm going to deal with 30 degrees. Now, if I want my cosine, it's the square root of 3 over 2. If I want my sine, it's the square root of 1 over 2. Last thing I have to do is figure out what quadrant I'm in. Quadrant 150 degrees is in quadrant 2. Sine must be positive, therefore y must be positive. Cosine must be negative, therefore x must be negative. Look, isn't that the same coordinate point? One last time, do the exact same coordinate point. And here we are using our chart trick. Chart trick is easy because you already set it up. Just like the full quadrant circle, it's already set up. So I go over to 210 degrees reference angle, which is 30. I get my y and my x value. So there's my y and my x value. I go to my astica. 210 degrees is either this way or this way. So 210 degrees is still in quadrant 2. Positive y, negative x. Boom, we're good to go. So... Just seeing that information, I'm ready to solve. Sine is my y value. Cosine is my x value. Tan is the numerator of the y over the numerator of x. So my sine value is my y value. My cosine value is my x value. I'm going to take the numerator over the denominator or over the x's numerator. So I get 1 over negative square root of 3. And that's this answer right here. If I wanted to rationalize it, I can end up with this answer. So either is correct. That's it. You're done. Finally, one last question. 330 degrees. It's already in standard position. I'm good to go. I don't need to adjust it. 330 degrees is in quadrant four. So if I go to my unit circle, that's this fraction right here. Square root of three over two, negative one half. There's my coordinate point x, y. If I didn't have that information, if I just had quadrant one, I think about my reference angle. So this distance right here is 360 minus 30 degrees. So my reference angle is 30 degrees. Which, which axis am I closest to is basically what I'm talking about. 330 is close to the x-axis. 30 is close to the x-axis. If I was dealing with the number 300, that's close to the y-axis. So 60 would be my reference angle. 
hopefully that helps you connect. So if I go over here and I'm looking at just quadrant one, the only thing I would have to do is figure out which quadrant I'm in for positive negative. I'm in quadrant four with angle 330. So that means if I'm looking at square root of three over two and one half, my X value has to be positive and my Y value has to be negative. All right, let's do it with the hand trick. 330 degrees reference angle is just 30 degrees. So I would fill out my cosine value, the square root of the top over two, my sine value, the square root of the bottom over two. I'd come over here, look at quadrant four, realize that C cosine or X has to be positive and Y must be negative. Boom, you're done. Let's do it one last time. If I had the chart, I would have already set up the chart for myself. Go to the reference angle of 30 degrees. There's my Y value. There's my X. So I'm going to write my Y and I'm going to write my X value. I go to my Astica. I know 330 is in quadrant four. Cosine means that X is positive and Y is negative. Now let's finish this actual question. So to solve my sine, I'm looking at the y. To solve my cosine, I'm looking at the x. To solve tan, I take the numerator of the y over the numerator of x. So let's solve our sine. Let's solve our cosine. And then let's solve our tangent. So I take negative 1 divided by the square root of 3. And I end up with negative 1 square root of 3. Or I can conjugate, rationalize it to negative square root of 3 over 3. And that's all I've got for you guys.